M0FXB, welcome to my videos learning how to update the firmware on the ATS 20 and 20 plus. I have already done this, but it's not completely right because the screen resolution is a bit out, but I still want to show you what I've learned so far. So I'm using the GitHub page here, and you can see that the end result is quite exciting, lots of features, full instructions there and uh, it's by Goshante okay and I'll put the link in the description so one way of loading the firmware was to use the program that we've got here on the right hand side called AVR Dudes okay so I'll put the link in and you go to that site and download that program which is just here you can see the XC there 2.17 just run that and it opens this program here on the right hand side the next thing you're going to need to get your cable your mini USB cable, you see it there, and it plugs into the back of the ATS120, so I'll just turn that around. I have taken the lid off just to see which model I've got, so I'm making a bit of a mess here. Um, but anyway, um, let's just take it out. You can see there, just underneath the word DSP, and that's my square cable, and you just plug it in. I've got a fully charged battery, plug it in, I've already had the driver, the CH340 driver, just turning that background, and completely organised here, Brilliant. okay, so we've got the cable in the back connected to our PC, going to need to check our device manager, and make sure we've got a port showing so you go right click on the windows squares device manager double click ports and it says look usb serial ch340 com3 you definitely need that if you're not showing the ch340 it's not going to work but the com number is fine and then click it right click go to right click the usb drive uh, serial port properties and just double check that you've got in port settings so the second tab along you really want it to be 115200 okay just that that's the preferred firmware one so that's all set there close that down if we go back to the github we need to download the sort of hex file that's that's been given and it says it here see above this nice screen it says download binary hex link here and when we click that we get this and I just saved it in my documents okay I just went save I've already got it there so it's going to tell me to replace of course the power is on with the and the inside my my ATS 20 I've got the the nano board which is what I would say most have got the nano board let's just quickly show you that without trying to there it is there nano most have got that Cables in the back. Now, this means I'm running this again just to experiment, but I don't mind because with these kind of things, if you persevere, you'll find that um, you'll always unbrick it, let's say. So we're going to go COM3. Now, we need to, that fault program that we downloaded, you need to hit the three dots here. So remember, COM3115 at the top here, I've selected. I can't find Arduino Uno or Nano, so I've selected this one, Arduino for bootloader using STK 500V protocol, just here, you've got a drop down, like so, and that's what I used when I was doing my DL2MAN device, USD, USDR device, and then here, ATmega328P, now, maybe that's the reason my screen size is wrong, but anyway, we're going to just do this, and once I did that, so we selected the, we just do that again, we'll select the hex now in my documents, go to the bottom, it's ATS EX version 1.18. We selected the COM, the board rate, Arduino, and then I just did program. And when I did that, everything started flashing and went quiet. Um, now please look at any errors that I might get, because I want to know why my screen and what I can do to get my screen correct but you can see there it's it's come back to life and I can you know change things I can see the frequency there and when I turn things are changing 
So I'm going to have a quick look at, there are some, some, in, some instructions here uh, that have been left. So I'm going to have a quick look at those instructions, just see if I can get some, you know, get this thing to just come to life. And even with not seeing the frequency correctly, and then I'll do some more work learning. If you look here, look, there's a long list. Full, how to flash, instructions, different choice, user manual, band selection, it says here. Short press to enter band selection, the band plus button, which is the top one, which at the moment for me isn't doing anything. Okay. So it could be the wrong firmware. Uh, what else we got here? Select band. So you press the top and then turn. Ah, well, that's good. So what? And you press the band and then rotate. So let's get this right. So remember, I, I'm not really teaching you how to use this because it hasn't been loaded properly, but I'm showing you my experimentations. And remember, I'm a novice. That just learns so band selection short press to enter band selection mode selecting the band using the encoder so band selection you press it and then we what i'm trying to get is 40 meters because that's probably my best seven hundred could be that one and then it says and confirm the encoder by pressing the the, the band again Oh look, no, it's still changing. Ah, there you go. So I'm now tuning. You can see the bandwidth here. Or the... I don't even know what number that is, that's my problem. So I keep going down. Band button. As we look through the instructions. Number one settings, short, short press to open close settings menu. When closing settings menu, all settings are saved from the EEPROM. Okay. Band selection, long press band. Let's do that. Oh. See that we've gone into FM now. So what I'm going to do is go off volume button, volume adjustment, short press to enter volume adjustment, then turn the encoder. So you press the volume. Okay. That makes sense. And then you can change the encoder. Step button, short press. So I can see the way it works. Just short pressing the buttons. And then you're using the encoder to select DSP, bandwidth, mode so mode selection short press the mode and then you turn do that again right i think leave it with me you can see i'm getting some progress and we'll be back soon bye for now and there's lots of other firmwares available as well seven okay it just needed a reboot and it's working great let's do some testing M0FXB, welcome back to my videos on the ATS20 and 20 Plus. You are going to like this firmware. Big shout to Joshante. All the software links instructions will be in the description of this video. Right now, I've just turned it on. I'm just going to flick through. I have loaded a video loading the firmware, and all you need is a, a USB, a mini USB cable, and you don't use the USB charging cable. You use this one here, okay? Above the word USB download. You just plug it into that and turn it on. And you do need to make sure that you've got your CH340 USB driver. So when it you look in your COM ports, just make sure that's there. If it's not showing, then you're gonna have to get that installed. Because sometimes Windows 11 can be a bit glitchy on that, but you'll get there. So the, the band conditions right now aren't actually busy, but I'll quickly show you the way this ticks. So you have to really sort of think it because the buttons become select selections and the encoder becomes changing those selections. For example, right now, we're just tuning there. You can see the small steps. So if I press the step button now, 
we just change the step size we'll do it again let's do one one killer one kilohertz right step and then we'll watch what happens so now we we'll hopefully later on the conditions will pick up it's a long wire 49 to 1 ballon that we're using at the moment so if you want to change mode for example you would press mode and then look that's gone to USB so that's the same we press band See what happens there. So now we press the band and we're actually going through the different bands. Um, there may be some extra band selections now. So you can see what there's 40, 10,000, 11. And look, eventually we went to broadcast radio. And look, I've pressed the encoder and it's starting to tune. It tunes in the direction that we last tuned at. Could it find something? Let's just press that for now. They're dogs, there's people that there go, go. and babies in push chairs as well. So they're absolutely. And again, fantastic. the step works for that but as well. I did find out about this really, really fantastic, lovely story of a mother and son. And See that? So that's that, and then we'll keep doing the band. Press band again. Mode. Let's do volume. Volume. Oh my God, what's all that? I press this band low button, look at all this. Why we need to read the manual? Bloody hell. A lot of work's been put into this. Right, there's volume. Volume up. Ah, volume up. You get another little number there. Let's try AGC. Oh, it shuts the screen down. Let's hold it. We did my bandwidth. Nice and easy on the bandwidth. I'm changing things with the encoder. I just think this is brilliant. And there are other firmwares, but I'll stick with this for a few weeks. We need to know what this is. Look, ATT, and then how do we change it? ATT. There's more menus. Kilohertz CPU 100 SSM BFO. I get it. So you push that one and you can cycle different menus. Look, you've got menu one page, two, three, and then back to one. How do we change one? We press. Oh, look, we press. See that? Give me the AUT, whatever that is. SM, what's that? So, you know, like I said, we need to read the instruction manual. If we just press and hold band. I'm trying to get out of this menu. Oh, there you are. Ah. There's someone there. We hold, can we scan? I'm holding. We hold down at the volume. Oh look, if you hold down the band, it, it goes through the bands. Did you see there was CB there? It ends up at um, broadcast.
Right, we are going to end the video. Right, well, it looks like it's worked, and thanks if you want. I'm going to attach this to the install video that I made, and uh, thanks for watching, and more to learn about this. Seven free.